So anyway, uh, welcome here at uh, our second edition of the Front and Forward Meetups. Uh, this one will be on uh, funds and SVGs. Uh, you're here at the Forhoede. We're a front end development agency of about 20 developers to project managers. I'm one of the front end developers slash half project management. Um, uh, my name is Jasper. And uh, so for tonight, we have two uh, front end uh, speakers uh, for you. But I want to say a bit about our uh, company. We do just front end, uh, we focus on mainly everything that happens in the browser. Sometimes we pick a bit of the server on top of that because uh, often when we feel like we can't achieve everything that we want in the browser because backend developers are not doing what we want. Server, uh, things that you might know us from is Funda.nl, uh, that's the most public thing. I think we've uh, done the front end for. We also do it for other fancy projects like for crane operators in the port of Rotterdam and we've made something for uh, luggage drop-off systems and then it's just part of the terminal where all the sensors are connected to. Uh, as long as there's a browser in something and we can do with browser technology then that's basically what we try uh, to do here. Uh, and we like to share what we do in, in our office. So for tonight, the two speakers, kind of like in the Heroes TV show, the one of us, one of them. We have that here as well. Uh, we have one of us, that's uh, uh, Jorge for tonight, and uh, one of them, or the other one, is uh, uh, who was kind enough to come here and uh, speak to us. Um, I had a few uh, formality things uh, for tonight. That was the, the BLT. So uh, the B, uh, I stands for beer, beer in the fridge. Uh, the L is live stream, uh, so we're live streaming this. So who, if you walk off here, you're on screen and behind your laptop, you're on screen. Um, uh, you're wearing a headset, the public isn't. So if when people ask questions, if you want to repeat them, then the people follow it. Uh, also know that people that are in the live stream, there's a chat on the side, and then if you type in there, then someone here has a laptop and they can repeat your questions uh, for you. So that's the L. Uh, T toilets uh, are in the <laughs> middle over there. Um, and the, um, the light is out on the women's bathroom. So if you don't want to use your phone as the light, you can also use the men's room. So uh, gentlemen, be kind and make sure that they can use that one. So that was the T. Um, so I think um, those were the, the formalities. Um, then I would like to introduce our uh, first speaker of tonight, which is uh, Ron Dieskens, aka uh, Pixel Ambacht on, on Twitter, who is a front end developer at Capisa in Weert. That's all the way down in Limburg, so he had to uh, go to uh, rush hour traffic to get here. So I'm extra grateful that he's here. Um, uh, who, uh, I follow who on, uh, on Twitter, and because he's my favorite source when it comes to everything uh, web fonts. Uh, related. I know that he experiments with it quite a bit, things like uh, color fonts, variable fonts, um, and uh, he recently, or a bit recently, published an article on uh, fixing Font Awesome and all the optimization tricks that you could do uh, in, able, uh, in order to make it uh, more performant. And that was actually the moment that I thought, ah, we need to have him here and uh, talk about that. So we invited him, and now he's here. So I would like you to give it up for uh, for who? Should we uh, stop this thing? Mm -hmm. Am I might do it. Okay. The other way around, I suppose. And if you could then just repeat what's in your slide. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? Do we get an answer for that? So if I said here, I'm not in, uh, in view, in camera. OK, this will be my position for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get started, uh, I would like to do a little quiz. Um, who here is old enough to know what this is or has done this? 
Oh, you know, know. Yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, did you actually yeah. write this this code? Did you use it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. This was scrolling text, the marquee tag. Does anybody know what this piece of code does? <laughs> and did you use it in production? Yeah, yeah, yes. This, of course, was table-based layouts, uh, the way we used to uh, uh, well do our layouts before we had proper CSS and uh, knew about diffs and floats and everything and way before Flexbox. Who knows this? OK. Yes, this is, of course, another ancient piece of uh, web code. The bulletproof font face. And I put this in a list of, of, of old deprecated stuff that you should probably <coughs> shouldn't use anymore because there's better options. And um, today I would like to um, uh, show you some of those options. Um, but this is a very broad um, um, subject, using web fonts on, on the internet. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of details that you have to get right, or uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, different ways you can approach this. So uh, I'm not going to go in depth on everything, um, but I will try to um, focus on a little thing that, uh, that you don't usually see in, in the blog posts about the subject, and uh, that is how to optimize the assets, the fonts themselves. Um, my name is Luniskus. Um, uh, on the web, I do stuff on uh, Pixel Ambar. Um, and this is a talk about web font performance. I think there's three uh, key issues to uh, doing web fonts properly. Uh, you have to have the right um, mindset. You have to uh, know what you're doing and make conscious decisions about uh, uh, whether you were leaving out some, some optimizations or whether you choose for some, um, uh, to serve fonts to some people and not to others. Uh, the second thing that's important is uh, writing the proper code, of course. I'm going to dive into that as well. This is the flash of an invisible text. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, there we are. And the third one uh, that I would like to talk about is, uh, uh, is having proper assets. Uh, that those are the actual binary files that you will offer to your, uh, to your visitors. Um, so the first thing, uh, having the right mindset. I think there is um, there is a web font etiquette that you, you should adopt as a developer. And it uh, consists of three parts. The first is uh, the, the idea to only offer web fonts to capable modern browsers. Uh, browsers that can properly handle new formats like WAF and WAF2. You offer system fonts or fallback fonts uh, to all other browsers. If you make that, if you draw that line in the sand and you have your modern browsers here and all the other browsers there, it makes uh, everything a lot simpler. And uh, once you realize that a browser that can handle uh, modern web fonts can also end up on the other side of the line when there's a slow internet connection, for instance, and the web fonts don't load, you, you can be sure with this approach that you offer a good experience to both uh, sides of the line in the sand. Um, the third uh, point in the web font etiquette, I think, is um, you have to apply the fonts as user-friendly and as efficient as, as possible, meaning that uh, you shouldn't, you, well, you shouldn't, you can do whatever you want, but I think you shouldn't uh, offer, uh, to just write a bulletproof uh, font face, uh, stick it in your CSS, and then just uh, uh, think of uh, taking care of everything, because there's a lot of problems with it. Uh, with bad fonts, especially when they don't load. Um, uh, offering web fonts to mo capable and modern browsers when translated to code, uh, I think you're, you've come across this or maybe you are familiar with this. Uh, uh, there are two formats, uh, WAF and WAF2. They aren't actually formats, they are uh, basically sort of uh, zipped versions of open type fonts, true type fonts, and open type fonts. So it's not a format in itself. It's just a regular old font that you use in uh, your Microsoft Word or whatever. But they're compressed. But we, we call it a format. So 
these are very well compressed. They are um, they are like uh, thirty percent of the original file size. And so that's a quite an optimization. Um, for the rest of the browsers, you can choose to either say. Uh, I'll make my design as solid and as agile as possible, and it doesn't really matter which other font uh, has been loaded. And you can just say, uh, my, my web font is a sans serif font, <coughs> and if it hasn't been downloaded for whatever reason, just go to, to any old sans serif font. But you can also say, uh, this list doesn't even fit. You can have a big list of fonts that look as closely as possible to your original font. And when uh, uh, your web, my web font doesn't load, then it goes to free to If that isn't uh, there, it goes to free to the line of type, uh, et cetera. And the idea is that it goes to the next font that might be on your system that looks as close as possible to your original font. Um, making your web, uh, your web page look kind of like how it was intended, um, but with a font that doesn't have to be done. Right. The third point of applying the font as efficient and user friendly as possible is those that consist of basically two, two things that you have to uh, take care of. You have to have a font loading strategy, and I'll dive into that in a minute. And you have to optimize your font delivery. If, um, if you can get the font across cyberspace as fast as possible, that's good for everyone. Um, but why use a font loading strategy? What, what's it for and what does it fix? What does it do? Um, there's a problem with web fonts. Uh, this is actually the flash of invisible text. I'm, I'm sure you're, you've all seen this, especially when you've uh, had a crappy internet connection or are on Twitter and see people complain about it. Um, what happens here is um, these are five frames um, between when the page is requested until the page is finally drawn. And you can see the uh, here if the request has been done, here the HTML is in and the CSS is in, but the browser um, doesn't have the web font yet that you've stuck in your CSS. So it draws the page, but it keeps the text invisible because the web font will come in later. And on the third frame, the web font is still being loaded fourth frame, the web font is still being loaded, and then on the fifth frame, the final frame, finally the font has arrived, <coughs> and the base can be drawn in the, in the proper font. This is really frustrating because if you just uh, drive into a tunnel or you have a really crappy um, internet connection in the south of the Netherlands and Limburg, then um, there can be a lot of those frames in between, and it can take uh, a lot of time before your font is uh, finally downloaded. Chrome has recently, um, or a while ago, um, that they usually they used to um, keep the text invisible for a maximum of three seconds, and, and then show a fallback font. And recently, they if they see that you are on a slow connection, they, they shorten that time and they switch to uh, fallback font immediately. So uh, that frame that's uh, at the most right will move a little closer uh, to. Uh, Left. Um, this is another uh, issue that that, that um, is one of the reasons that you need a font loading strategy. The flash of unstyled text, and the acronym for that is FOUT, which of course in Dutch is wrong. And this is, um, but that's that that's wrong because it's actually pretty uh, a pretty good solution. This is what. Edge and Internet Explorer does. They draw the, the website in just the fallback font immediately, and then when the web font has been loaded at the end, uh, it applies <coughs> the web font. So you can read the content, uh, well, basically immediately. I think that is the best, uh, best option. This doesn't, um, but th this happens when you don't do anything. You, you just leave it to the browser. You just do your add font face uh, rule and um, you say to the browser, do whatever you want, uh, either do this or, or do this. I don't care. And having a font loading strategy um, means that 
you take control of what happens between um, when the web font has been first requested and has been finally downloaded. Um, there are lots of uh, options to, uh, to, to dabble this flash of invisible text and flash of uh, unsound text. Uh, one option from the future is um, a CSS property called font display, where you can say, draw the, the page um, in the fallback font first, and when the web font arrives, uh, draw it in the web font, or uh, set a timeout in there, um, and a couple of other uh, options. But this hasn't been supported very well yet, so I, I chose to not go to, <coughs> too deeply into this for, uh, for this talk. Um, another one that's coming, that's on the horizon, but that hasn't arrived uh, yet, is the JavaScript font loading API, which is basically a promise-based uh, system where you can ask, has this font been downloaded? If yes, then you can apply uh, 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 a class to your uh, HTML or to your document, uh, signaling uh, your web font has finally been downloaded, so maybe redraw the page. I will give an example in a minute. Um, you can more or less simulate these two options today by uh, using little JavaScript uh, libraries uh, like Font Face Observer um, uh, by, uh, by Bramstein and uh, Web Font Loader from uh, TypeKit, if I'm not mistaken. They do exactly that, and it works uh, like this. When the page has been originally drawn, it's called uh, the Fadana font or uh, any other sans serif. And then the font has been that uh, will download on the background, and it takes 10 seconds or 10 seconds. The JavaScript uh, library will determine okay, the font is finally in. It sticks this class, the uh, font loaded class, <coughs> on your document, and then you can uh, uh, write your CSS accordingly. You can either apply it or uh, establish a CSS. Well, it took five seconds to. User is probably already reading my page. I don't want to swap uh, fonts at this uh, stage. Uh, but the important thing is you have control now. You you, you don't let the, the browser decide. You decide what happens. Um, is that everything you can do? No. Uh, you could use a um, uh, different type of font that loads uh, quicker. I should have put that, that one on the bottom, so that's a wrong for that. Um, the, the thing that you can do is like load uh, your web font asynchronously uh, with, uh, with Ajax. You can inline it uh, in, in, a, in a style sheet and uh, load that. You can exploit local storage and download the font to there. And once you have uh, established that it's there, then apply it. You can prefetch the fonts or preload uh, the font so that <coughs> Instead of waiting for the CSS and the document to say, okay, we have this font and it's actually being applied, so let's download it. You can force download it, uh, so to say. And another technology from the future is variable fonts, which is a technology where you can put different widths and weights of a font in one file, meaning you only have one HTTP request, and smaller files. Uh, potentially get uh, like uh, uh, very light font and a very uh, black font uh, and, and eight steps empty from one font file. Um, and there's even more little things that you can do to improve the, the loading of your fonts or to, uh, to take control of what happens. But I also chose not to go into that because I want talk about optimizing font delivery. And that is what actually happens on the network. What your browser sees, I need a font, tells the server at the other end of cyberspace, hey, I need a font, would you please send it over? And what happens then uh, is what, uh, what I would like to show today. Um, yeah, it's basically getting uh, fonts of browser as soon as possible. What what can you do there? Um, 
First up, common sense stuff. Well, use less fonts. If you want your web uh, website to, to render quickly, and you have eight fonts, and they all need to be downloaded before your content can be uh, viewed, maybe it's a good idea to snip some of those fonts because uh, no file is uh, quicker downloaded than no file. Um, you can do some basic network and um, server stuff like setting the proper cache uh, headers for your uh, uh, fonts that they don't get downloaded all the time. Uh, set proper compression. Um, in a nutshell, this means don't put gzip compression on your WAF fonts because they're already super compressed. But do uh, put it on true type fonts or SVG fonts if you use those old uh, DOT fonts because uh, they actually benefit from GSIP compression. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> I have run, um, I, I don't do a lot of stuff on the server, but my uh, my idea was that not a, not a lot of uh, these settings come out of the box. So if you, if you serve like those old, older uh, formats, make sure that those get compressed and whatnot. Um, is it to be too? Uh, it's a way to, to bundle network requests and then keep connections open and get a more efficient um, connection with the server. Uh, I'm probably explaining it a, little, a bit simplistic, but I am a front end developer, so it's a black box and it uh, it's, um, reduces the request and latency is as much as a problem as big files. Um, and now this is where it, it, it gets interesting for me because uh, what we've, we've talked about so far are um, um, everything about web fonts except the files themselves, that, that little WAF file that you have on, uh, on the, in your code base or that uh, WAF2 file. Uh, when you buy a font or you license a font, it might come with a lot of language support. I support Cyr Cyrillic or Vietnamese, and you might not need all of that, uh, all of those languages. You, you might have um, a website for, uh, I don't know, cow tipping in Limburg. You can be pretty sure that you can uh, get the basic Latin, uh, you can do everything you want on your site. But watch out, especially Motley Crue fans, watch out. Subsetting is cutting out characters that you think you don't need, but there might be occasions when you actually uh, have unforeseen circumstances. Somebody has a weird last name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a few of those uh, last names in the, the prize here. Um, like, like a news website, they, 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 they cannot pull this off. Um, you might have seen this a lot with uh, Erdogan. Uh, with the little squiggly, oh, I'm a type guy, yeah. this is called a squiggly. Um, <laughs> um, the, the font that doesn't have it, so you, you, will, you will see them stick, sticking out like a sword. <coughs> uh, so you have to be a bit careful um, with that. While we got the knife out and we're cutting in our fonts and cutting out characters, let's do some live font hacking. I have prepared earlier a. Um, yes. Um, I have a website. Oh, can actually visit me. I think. Yes. I'm using a font uh, that I forget the name of, uh, Ignatius Pro. And this is served by Typekit. And I thought it would be fun to uh, look at what Typekit serves because it's the second biggest um, font. Uh, Legal font services on the internet, so you can be pretty sure that they, they think a lot about how, how to get the <coughs> font to the browser as efficient as possible. So I would think it would. Be, I thought it was, uh, was a good idea to look at how efficient their fonts are. Well, um, I, I've got a few files here. I'll uh, I'll explain them uh, to you later. Oh wait, so yeah, I've got them. We're going to look at the internals of a, of a font. Uh, we've got to go to trim some fat. Make a low resolution version, and I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, 
press the heck out of it, and then compare it to the original. See if you can, uh, uh, can do better. You can make a smaller file. Um, OK, so I downloaded it earlier. I have a Canadian Go off to file. That, that is what uh, type gets searched if you have a uh, uh, visit the site with Go, which supports WAF2. Um, and I am now, you, you can see here, it's, it's a 44K um, uh, file. Let's see if it can be better. But uh, the tools <laughs> that I'm using, they don't uh, work directly with, with WAF2, which, uh, as I explained earlier, is more of a compression format, a zip version. So we're going to unzip it, and it will become a normal true type font. We'll do some stuff on there. And then, in the end, we convert it back to a WAF2 to, to see uh, the actual result. This is a tool that's, um, um, that will dump, um, uh, uh, it's called TTX font tools. It will dump a font to an uh, XML file so you can easily inspect it. Um, and if I convert it back now, we can say <coughs> we will get a true type of font. Can you see this up there? Sense. See that? Can you see it online? <laughs> um, so you can see that this WAF2 file, when, when you decompress it into a um, XML file, that's the extension of the it will become 2.3 megabytes. 44K goes to uh, 2.3 megabytes. And then if you turn it back into a true type font, this is what you usually uh, have on your like, uh, system font. It's 124 kilobytes. Are you with me so far? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's encouraging. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll continue. Um, let's see what it means this Pro looks like inside. This isn't a, a very um, uh, Thorough introduction to the uh, to, to this font format, but, but I'll, I'll quickly step through it. Uh, I'm going to write a blog post about this, so if you don't catch all of this, but you find it interesting, I'll check back within uh, four days or eleven months, somewhere in between. I'll, I'll finish this <laughs> blog post. Um, what, what we see here, for instance, uh, is all of the characters that are inside the font. A lot of characters. And that's because I chose uh, the full Monty on, on TypeKit. I want ligatures. And you can recognize it here. This is uh, a FF ligature. It's uh, an ID and an internal name. Uh, it's got a lot of different varieties of, of characters. And in the end, it has about uh, 538 characters that are in the font. And, uh, let's see. The biggest part of the font are the letter shapes. So you can, you can look at it like a vector drawing, like an SVG or a vector drawing of, of a letter. And they all live in the glyph table. And let's see if we can find something here. Capital A. Um, that's, a that's a bunch of contours. It's a bunch of uh, points on drawn on a raster. That will be on a grid. That will be uh, translated to something either for print uh, or, or, in our case, on screen. Um, I love the arguments. This all builds the uh, <coughs> And it got some uh, hinting instructions. Mostly uh, used on, uh, on Windows or uh, mobile uh, devices. Uh, please make sure that uh, the font will look, uh, the letter will look. Uh, good on small sizes on crappy screens. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of this stuff in there, and um, not much of it is, is really relevant for what we're doing now. So let's get to the exciting part. Uh, we are going to use a tool called Ifts Upset. Ifts Upset. I know whatever you want. It's um, font tools subset, and it's a Python thing. And Yeah, 
this. Um, it's a command line tool and it will uh, optimize uh, your fonts in a web safe, lossless way. That, that means it will um, remove legacy stuff uh, that you might not need on, on modern systems because we already decided we are going to serve Loth and Loth 2, so we can drop some stuff that might be for, for Windows XP or OS 2. It's really weird so um, It will drop um, Layout features that are cosmetic. That means if you have a brush font, um, you have like a leather A, you can uh, you use it in Illustrator or something to choose. You want a big swatch or you want a small swatch that you can start that level with, or you want it to connect to the following letter in a certain way. Um, most likely, you don't use that on, on the web. So it strips out that stuff as well. It strips out like the technique. Uh, Digital signatures and uh, other metadata that you don't need, uh, especially not in the browser. You might need it in the desktop, but it gets rid of all the, the fat that we don't need. Um, I'll let it talk a lot, so um, let's see what's going on. Uh, it's originally a subheading. <coughs> um, can you read it in the back? It's a subset. Minus, 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 blitz, and all of them. Um, and this is basically enough to uh, to run all the default uh, safe optimizations, unless you don't specify it all. Um, I forgot to do. Yes, there it is. It's Um, I asked the tool to, to tell us uh, what, what it's doing, and it's dropping a lot of, uh, of stuff. This is, this is what um, SVGO would do for SVGs, or I think it's often do for, for PMD files or for JPEG files, uh, more or less. Um, uh, for instance, these are two, Dyna and GDyna. Those are um, tables that are not in the type specification. Those are things that Typekit has injected in there um, because um, it's contains information about their build process and copyright information. And um, what we're doing now is against the um, uh, uh, against the rules if you use a Typekit font. So again, that's the biggest form of online, but we're not supposed to cut library uh, stuff like this out. Um, it will and subset uh, removing all kinds of crap. You can read all about that in the blog post. Uh, but for now, let's see what it did. And it got about 10 kilobytes. Here is the original PDF. Yeah. Subset one. Um, it's, uh, it's about 10 kilobytes shorter. That's, that's it's kind of nice. I have to go to my uh, speed here. Oh, yeah. um, what we saw in the uh, in the um, uh, um, these fonts contain a lot of handling instructions. For a system like this, um, Apple system, they don't look at the handling instructions at all. It's uh, mostly Windows that still uses this to, uh, especially on, on low resolution <coughs> monitors. To tweak the, the letter shapes a little bit. But if you decide that you don't want to use it, um, and Google, for instance, Google Fonts, they strip all the ending. So if you use a Google Fonts, you won't have anything at all. If we want to do that as well, we'll run it through it again. I would say, no hitting. <coughs> it, hit me. It, hit me. it will also strip the hinting. You can see it's even even smaller. It's now uh, almost um, almost 50k smaller. That's kind of a nice gain, I think. Um, 
So, so th these are the basics. These, these are the absolute minimum stuff that I would do if I would get a phone that the license allows it. Uh, I would do this stuff. I mean, you can do sort of um, stuff like this with uh, Font Squirrel online, but Font Squirrel, as well as type they have the problem they have to manage a lot of fonts. And it's a web service, and you cannot wait too long for your, uh, for your fonts to, to serve or download it. So when they compress their fonts to WAF1, WAF2, they use um, they use a compression setting that is more or less a trade-off between uh, how long it takes and how well it compresses. Um, for one font on, on, a, on a machine like this, we don't care about that and we don't do use a tool called uh, WAF2 compress. And I think it uses the broadly compression algorithm. algorithm. Um, on the maximum compression level, goes to 11. <laughs> that is serious, by the way. It's best compression level. <coughs> That's right, the 29k instead of the original 44k. That's, um, <coughs> I haven't run the numbers, but that's a, a, that's a quite a significant Quite a significant uh, uh, change. It's uh, one third of the fat has still been cut, and the only observable thing that you have sacrificed are the hinting in this font on a Windows machine. But we can stay, take this even further because, like I showed you, these um, these coordinates they are drawn on a on a grid that a type designer chooses. When a type designer starts with a new font, uh, the font design software asks, what kind of grid do you want to uh, draw something in much detail, less detail? And um, that unit is called the units per n. And this font has a units per n value of 1,000. So it has a, a virtual grid of 1,000 by 1,000. Let us draw on that. And the thing is, I have to jump back. Um, that can mean that uh, the, 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 we'll store the difference between this point and the next point, uh, like, like an SVG would. The thing is, if you have big numbers, uh, if this means uh, moving 500 points on your, uh, on your grid, uh, that means it needs to, to have two bytes is two bytes to store that in the binary format. Uh, and everything below 255, 256 uh, can be stored in one byte. So if you can get all those differences um, to be uh, not further apart than 255, uh, they will all fit in one byte instead of maybe half of them in Two bytes. That will save us. And uh, I've also prepared a little script. Uh, I'm using a tool called um, um, FontForge in the Python script, and uh, this will really truly um, this will really crudely open our uh, font. Uh, change the n value to 100 instead of 1000 that we saw it was, uh, and squash it all down and save it as a low res uh, variant. Uh, so let's see what that does. Um, it's not advised to do this with fonts that, that will become huge. If you, uh, if you want to use this font and you do print design, you want to make a billboard on a uh, on building, you don't want to do this. But if you keep your um, Font at 34 pixels in your, in your uh, uh, website, you most likely won't see the difference. And font designers will shoot me for that statement, but <laughs> take, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, <coughs> uh, let's see, uh, which one, what is the subset one? Let's see. Let's get as small as possible. Set. All right, that looks quite right. OS. Um, it took 
this font, oh, and it didn't do a very impressive job. Took this font, and it's <laughs> one kilobyte. Okay, so I think we can safely say that that, that was a very successful one. Uh, I think um, this very small game that we had uh, will have disastrous effect on the, um, on the actual design of the leopard. Because I don't know if you can see it, but because the grip has gotten uh, coarser, oh, um, you can see uh, here, it's, this is the original, this is uh, 1,000 to the strength, that one is 100 to the strength. This is a smooth curve right here, and here it's got a little bit more square. Hmm. Um, here something is happening as well. And I don't know if you could tweak this um, a little bit. I, I'm, I haven't dived into this uh, as much as you would like to, but um, this is pretty much the result of what you do when you get a low resolution from it. But the, the appearance of uh, uh, body, uh, body flex is size, it's not really that not small, I do think. Um, so, if you are going to do um, <coughs> extreme optimizing, this might be an option for you, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I've done a, a, a test with another font. This is Droid Sans. Uh, that one has a unit brand value of 2048, and this is a 512, 46, 32, 60. You can see here you don't see a lot of difference. Here, maybe if you look very close, but here you can start to notice differences. And here the leather starts to fall apart and uh, it turns into something that's completely tainted. Um, these had a little bit better uh, um, uh, results. These are um, uh, some results for the upcoming blog um, post. You can see maybe if you use that. 46 uh, version that would be adequate for your site, and you would save that. Um, and that's what might be useful for one of those other many techniques that you have uh, the flow of the, the flash of flow text. Um, this is a technique by Zach Ladderman, um, where he takes the font that you want to use, takes only A to Z, uh, uppercase and lowercase. And nothing else. And if you compress that right, you can squeeze that down to about uh, eight or nine kilobytes, depending on how uh, how much detail is in your font. And you can stick that near your, your critical part, the first 40, 40 kilobytes that you serve to the user. And that means that most of your text will be drawn in the font that it will eventually be drawn because the proper font will be loaded uh, uh, after all this has been rendered. And maybe compressing a font down like like uh, like this, maybe uh, it's you can get away with that one or that one. And uh, when you have a font that's 8K and you can squeeze it down to 6K, maybe that's that's worth it for you. So should we do all of that? Um, as a nerd, I think yes, because it's fun to hack around in these things. Um, and it's, uh, it pains my heart if we transfer a uh, useless dead weight uh, over, over cyberspace. We, what's the point in that? So uh, <coughs> I say trim all the fat that, um, that you can. But as Bramstein already uh, said, latency is a real performance killer. And I'm uh, skipping a lot of his uh, smart science behind this, and I'll just uh, go right to. Um, to this chart where he explains like font B here, it takes longer to wait uh, on all kinds of network stuff and on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the server at the other end than it takes for the actual transfer. Once the transfer has been initiated and bytes are coming to your computer, then it's usually okay. And it doesn't really matter that much if you uh, transfer uh, 30K or you transfer 22K, those eight kilobytes 
will probably not be very noticeable, but uh, a drop in uh, internet connect connectivity will do much more harm. So the, 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 the wacky uh, uh, optimizer stuff that I just showed, showed you, it's, it's fun, uh, but I think that shouldn't be part of the web format again, because if you keep these three things in mind, um, then you can just work with the regular WAF or WAF2 files that uh, the font supplier gives to you. And if you have a uh, font loading strategy, then I <coughs> will make a website that's nice to visit and will not upset your readers. Um, yeah, that was it. Uh, thanks for listening to me. Or Are there any questions? Um, with the code um, that you uh, optimized, there was a switch between the, the, the number behind was the, the change in the grid, right? The, the, the yes. Per, uh, uh, why did it go up and down? Oh, that's a good question. The question was, um, and this chart, yeah. Um, the question is, why does uh, the font size go up and down while well, theoretically the resolution has been halved here, this font. Uh, the, 200, uh, the 512 and 256. <coughs> uh, I don't know, actually, really. Um, one, uh, one theory I have is um, that um, I, I should take a Saturday afternoon to figure out where I have to get so it won't be soon. The theory I have is that. Um, Maybe, uh, like in this range, uh, it doesn't really matter, and all the points, are like 20% of the points that were previously two bytes, are now one byte. And it doesn't really matter and why it goes up. Maybe it's a random error of the. Maybe you have to show the CPF that it's more linear, but compression comes in the amount of repetition, so that goes to the best repetition. Uh, it's very well possible. Uh, yeah, the, the remark was that uh, maybe the true card files uh, themselves, this uh, this up and down uh, stuff, isn't happening. Um, oh wait, and we can just check it really quickly. There's now a period as well. Uh, uh, droid sounds. That was one. So you can you can see at the top um, you can see the, um, uh, the, the the TTF files and uh, a while down I converted them all to, to WAF, not WAF2 uh, by the way. Um, uh, and oh wait, yeah, the 512 um, ppm version is 35k, and then the 256 one is 38k. So it gains weight. So yeah, some uh, some other fonts where I've, I've done this, uh, I think. Uh, you know, some... uh, so you so explain to that uh, the scale of the use of different numbers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, put the points into uh, small grids and then. Uh, it's uh, it's very well possible. It's um, it's. Yeah, you have this rough line that, that goes down, but there are ups and downs in there, and uh, running stuff. It's uh, that's uh, that's very that could be very well uh, an option. But uh, you bet that 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 uh, going, uh, I'll, I'll hope to have to this figured out when we have one of those. Uh, those uh, Uh, yeah, the, the question is if you um, if you put uh, the uh, well, it's, it's a bit, but, but, um, the, the question is if you put the rel uh, preload um, on, on a 
link in your HTML, so you instruct the browser to uh, to already start downloading a font that you know you're going to need later. But uh, the CSS, uh, not, not yet. Uh, how you do you handle uh, WAF and WAF2? Because if you tell it to, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. So uh, fetch me the WAF2, the WAF, and maybe the OTF version as uh, well. Um, then you're going to end up with three downloads, and that will be a shitty experience because you need one font. And uh, the answer to that, I don't know. I uh, I haven't done uh, a lot with, uh, with with that side of uh, of compliance to be honest. Uh, I figure you, you could maybe um, uh, have uh, JavaScript help you out with that, but um, I'll have to <coughs> There's a lot of uncertainties uh, to summarize that, yeah, uh, how that would work. And um, some consider this uh, also an anti pattern because uh, you are already forcing a, a download that uh, should, should really be decided by the browser. Um, so, um, if, you, if this is worth uh, looking into, if you want to squeeze a last bit uh, of performance out of your. Uh, um, if you're a web project, but uh, don't just dump it with uh, five links and you put them all in uh, there and think you have to fix the deal. That's really good. Yeah. Well, I checked it. The three notes are only uh, supported, uh, and browser things support uh, both of them. Yeah. That's perfect. That's all. The, the preloading is only supported when the browser supports both too. So you will only have to down um, for now, yeah. Um, yeah, so if that comes to browsers that export uh, it to browsers that also that, uh, don't support WAF2, you support WAF. Okay, that's, uh, that's good to know. Anything else? Oh, and uh, all the way at the bottom here, uh, to assess essential sources uh, of information, check that and then it comes time, they, they know, uh, uh, if I know 16 units per annum of all the knowledge they can do, uh, power in, uh, um, do check out their work, they, they're they very smart and they uh, they know this stuff up, uh, even better, so. Uh, Will you get to fight for life? Um, uh, yeah, good question. Yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably put my slides uh, online as I have uh, already one request for that. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, put, I'll probably work with them. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you, Mel. Um, I heard that uh, Polish Money was very popular at uh, Meetup. I always get them, so I'm going to put a new flavor out uh, this week. I think. So, uh, and there's a uh, voucher in the Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.